Hello, Gore Sex West. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about uh, what PBIS is, what that really does mean, and how that might look in our building. So uh, I think the first thing we need to do is, first of all, get a good idea of what PBIS really is and what it does for our students. Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education, Positive Behavior Intervention and Supports. Help increase positive student behaviors using data-driven systematic approaches. It will be abbreviated PBIS. So, why are PBIS systems important and useful for educators? It is important to have an organized plan to tackle the constant stream of student behavior problems. With PBIS, school staff are on the same page and adhere to a unified plan. Discipline decisions are based on actual data. The behavior problems are approached using objective measures with a focus on data collection methods. And one of the biggest truths in education is that behavior problems occur in all schools. Kids will be kids, but the average degree of behavior problems will vary. Next up, how do we create a school-wide PBIS system? The first thing you want to do is establish a leadership team of staff, teachers, and school administrators. Plan creations should be a collaborative approach, giving a voice to representatives of different groups. Moving forward, the team should develop school-wide rules and expectations. The rules and expectations must be transparent and should be widely understood by students, staff, and parents. Now, just having expectations are not enough. Be sure teachers implement these rules in the classroom. Are the teachers holding students accountable for their expectations that have been set? Schools must frequently assess if their PBIS systems are effective in producing results in terms of increasing desired student behaviors and decreasing inappropriate student behaviors. Some schools will incorporate a three-tier system for PBIS. We begin with intervention at tier number one. This tier is generally focused on the classroom level. Overall, schools must ensure that students are receiving proper instruction. Tier number two. Here, students that need further behavior supports are often worked with in small groups. These students are identified through data collection processes. The small groups work on learning social skills Tier number three, get support at the individual level. These students require individualized attention with mentoring, FBAs, ABC charts, counseling services, and many different types of services. The PBIS is very similar to a response to intervention RTI. Moving forward, consider how to reinforce behaviors. The process is positive reinforcement not negative reinforcement. The first thing you want to do is to identify the desired target behavior of the student. The desired target behavior is usually something like raising their hand, being on task, showing up on time, and other types of behaviors. If the student performs a target behavior, follow it up with a written, physical, or verbal positive response. Reinforcing the positive behavior can come in the form of giving students a thumbs up or an okay sign, also, you want to give positive reinforcements immediately after they occur. The longer you wait to give a positive reinforcement for a behavior, the less effective that reinforcement is going to be. Here are specific examples of positive reinforcements. One of the first things you can do is reward students with higher class participation grades. For most boys and some girls, Rewards, including sports and activity time, are very popular. Time in the gym to play basketball is one example. If you see persistent positive changes in behavior, reward a student by giving them a certificate, maybe student of the month. Other awards are acceptable as well. Not all students enjoy sports. Free computer time can also be an option. Token and point systems are quite common. If students earn enough points, they are allowed to purchase items off an approved list. Let's not forget how much some students love art. It gives students some time to draw and paint. Always remember, positive behavior rewards are meant only for desired behaviors. And now, 
Here are some general teaching strategies meant for PBIS systems. In most cases, teachers should have classroom rules posted somewhere in their room. Also, be sure classroom rules are clearly stated and in a positive form for their students. PBIS systems call for teachers to have a warm, inviting, and friendly attitude. It is the aim for teachers to create an overall positive classroom environment. More than just rules, students should know basic procedures for how to go to the bathroom, participate in discussions, transition between activities, and much more. Let's not forget how important it is for students to have engaging work. That is work that is challenging yet achievable. Overall, these classroom management strategies should be used in all settings. Before I finish, I want to express some criticisms. Other students who do behave often lose respect for schools and teachers when they see poorly behaved students getting rewarded. Also, rewarding students for doing schoolwork takes away the intrinsic value of an education, which is above all most important. Okay, so you can see here at Gorsuch, we do have a very uh, diverse team uh, set up here. Uh, I do believe that uh, each one of these people really give good input to our, our discussions and our decision making process. So this year for the 2020-2021 school year, we do have Jocelyn Jackson, Molly Sahaley, Elizabeth Flowers, Jeff Fisher, Ashley Henwood, Kevin Boyer, Laura Brown, Dennis Love, Tammy Furness, myself, Shane Hart, and we always have a parent and also uh, Mr. Spires, the principal, will, will be sitting in on a lot of these meetings as well. Okay, so what is it exactly that we do? Um, I guess we hold PBIS meetings uh, on site once a month to plan and coordinate those uh, school-wide behavioral systems. Um, we're responsible for planning the PBIS activities and programs such as the PBIS kickoff um that we do every fall the uh the booster lessons of school rules and acknowledgement programs uh, that being our master voter program that, that mr boyer will speak of here in a little bit uh and continually monitoring and updating uh pbis programs uh we also attend district-wide meetings and trainings to promote the continuing development and maintenance of pbis programs um, at core uh, we present pbis news at the staff meetings to keep staff up to date with what we're doing. Uh, and, and we also like to get feedback from other uh, staff members as well. Uh, the PBIS team leader is responsible for facilitating those monthly PBIS meetings um, and also providing the behavioral data uh, that, that we use to make our uh, decisions for students. So here at Gorsuch West, we have our character skills or our building blocks, which is the base of our PBIS. And then we also have our, our school-wide expectations or our school-wide rules that we have um, that kind of are in each area and kind of help us uh, go from day to day. So our character skills uh, or our building blocks, as we call them here at, at Gorsuch West, are trust, trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, uh, fairness, caring, and citizenship. And so then we take those building blocks and we come up with our uh, school-wide rules or expectations, um, that is be safe, be responsible, be respectful, and be a master builder. So when we talk about these expectations, the be safe, be responsible, be respectful, and be a master builder, uh, those are in every area. So it's a classroom, it's outside, it's all around the school, cafeteria, you always want to be safe in your, uh, in your actions and your thinking, you want to be responsible, you want to be respectful, and you want to be a master builder. So now that you guys have learned a little bit about our um, school-wide expectations and our building blocks and kind of what we do and why we do it, 
um, as far as behavior goes, I want to talk to you a little bit about our Master Builder program. So with the Master Builder program, it takes all of our building blocks and it recognizes whenever a student is following one of those building blocks. So any staff member can hand that out at any time. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the classroom. It can be out on the playground. It can be on the bus. Um, it can be through the hallways in the cafeteria, wherever it might be, wherever that staff member sees that student following one of those building blocks and following our expectations of being safe, being responsible, being respectful, and being a master builder. So if a student gets one of those um, master builder forms, uh, we always like to for them to take it home and have the parents sign it um, just so they can kind of get that praise at home from the parent too, which helps out. And so that the parents know what type of behavior they're having at, at school, what type of positive behavior they're having at school too. So when that gets turned into the office every morning on the announcements, Mr. Mr. Spires announces every single one of those master builders. Sometimes we have um, about 30, 40 of those on, on a morning announcement. So it, it's always a good thing for those students to be able to hear their names. Um, so once those are announced, then they go into a drawing. So every single week we have a drawing where we take, um, take two master builders for every grade level. So for kindergarten through fifth grade, um, for a total of 12, um, and those are our Master Builders of the Week. Now, this year, we've done something a little different, where those Master Builders of the Week actually get a yard sign on Mondays, and we do that on the virtual Mondays, um, since we are in, in blended learning right now, and we don't have any students on Mondays. One other thing that we've started just recently is the Master Builder of the Month program, um, and that is in partnership with Fairfield Homes, or who are such with Realty here in town. Um, we've been really, really uh, blessed by them, and be able to, to provide a prize pack and a uh, Raisin Cane's lunch for those students. Um, and those are kind of the best of the best students, um, the ones that are, are always caught doing, following our building blocks um, and always caught following our, our school-wide expectations. So those are always um, a good thing and those are, are nominated by whole grade levels. So that occurs uh, once a month and that's uh, something new that we're doing. And like I said, it, we're really grateful to Fairfield Homes and Gorsuch really to be, to be able to do that this year. Okay, guys, I did just want to touch on um, our tier two processes. Uh, we do have a tier one team on our PBIS team. We also have a tier two team. Um, you can kind of read through the, the list there of, of the differences between the two teams. Um, I will say also that uh, when we're looking at placing a kid into our, our tier two uh, strategies, um, we're looking really only at putting about 10 to 20 percent of our kids in that uh, in that section, in the, those tier two strategies. Um, those kids also receive all the tier one or the universal strategies that everybody gets, um, but they also get a little extra help. Um, if you would ever have to refer a, a student to uh, tier two, um, we also have a, a tier two referral form that, uh, that I've included on this slide. Um, you can kind of click on that to be directed toward that referral form. Okay, so here you can see our intervention function and outcome chart. Uh, we do use this chart to try to figure out what the kid needs. Uh, if, if, if a student's being referred to tier two, we need to figure out what they need and which uh, strategies will fulfill that need for the student. So uh, we will take a look at this chart um, to try to figure out which strategy we're going to attempt. We also have a website with a litany 
of resources that uh, are, are helpful to families, teachers, um, even students. Um, and you can find that website if you have access to the PowerPoint just by clicking on the, the picture of our website, or you can kind of just go ahead and put the uh, address in there. Um, you can find helpful videos, um, coronavirus uh, resources right now, tier one, tier two, tier three strategies, um, lots of things, including the social work corner website by Mr. Boyer um, for here at Gorsuch. Um, there you can find links to uh, school-based counseling, uh, mental health resources, community resources, homeless student support, uh, and even more uh, PBIS help. So uh, helpful website if you, uh, if you would take a look at that, uh, you might find it beneficial. So another resource you can check out is this pbisworld.com. Um, I love this website. It has a great, um, it has a lot of great ideas for uh, interventions that you can try at the tier one, tier two, and even tier three level. Um, it has data tracking forms um, and all that uh, good stuff that teachers might find useful. Um, again, this this when you get there to pbisworld.com, this is what shows up on the home page. You can start with a behavior that you're noticing, uh, and then work there from from there to try to figure out how to solve the problem. Okay, last thing for today, guys, um, is the PBIS handbook. Um, you all have access to this. This is in the Google Drive. This is a living document that changes year to year. Um, it has all the information that we kind of gone over so far, um, and it also has extra stuff. Uh, if you would like to see some of that, uh, please um, just uh, get on Google Drive and, and check that out. Um, I do want to thank you all for listening to me today, uh, going through the, the BBIS and the uh, rewards acknowledgement system that we have here as well. So have a good one.